Hello everybody. Today we have a super interesting interview with Tom who is a good friend of mine and a super interesting dropshipper. I'm so excited about this interview because I didn't create any interviews or any videos for this YouTube channel for a lot of time, but this one is a special one. So I really wanted to spend time on that even with all of the world that we have right now on AutoDS. So how are you today, Tom? I'm great. I'm great. Yo. How are you? I'm good. So, uh, before we get started and jump into all the technical stuff about how you became a top Shopify seller with uh, the Shopify Plus subscription and everything that you do right now, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? For sure, for sure. Uh, started out um, with Amazon FBA and then I went on like, like a big trip to South America and when I came back, I really wanted to come back into the business but didn't have so much money. So. I was like looking for an alternative that will uh, uh, will bring some cash flow, but at the same time, I won't need to like invest too much into it because I didn't have much of the time. So I started getting into dropshipping, and of course, the first thing that you do when you start uh, dropshipping is like search for a, for a software that will basically sync your products from the from the supplier that you want to use directly to your store. And that's actually uh, when I met Leo from uh, AutoDS, and from there I grew to like uh, like started um, private labeling my products in China, and then bring them to the US. But when I just started, dropshipping was like um, really helpful for me for testing products and seeing what works and what doesn't. That's cool. And how did you hear about uh, dropshipping on the at the first time? Like I was already in the FBA business, so I was in like some groups and, and I just I started looking for like ways to, to, to make money without investing too much. And that's when I found out about dropshipping. That's good. Um, okay, and uh, right now, uh, so from what I know and what you just said, so right now you have a branded store and you have your FBA business and everything there. But I would like to focus on the uh, Shopify dropshipping store that you have in the beginning, regular dropshipping. Um, so before we get started, how, how did you get to the niche that you sold there? And if you can also explain what was the niche, if it's uh, fine for you or not. For sure. Um, actually about the niche, it's a pretty tricky subject. And I was just thinking of, of like, I didn't have any research method. I was just thinking in my head, like which niche are many people buying in? Uh, I just wanted to have like a big enough niche for me to, uh, to reiterate, like if some product doesn't work for me, I don't want to set up the whole store from scratch. So I was looking for more like a, a general niche that I can test multiple products without opening new stores, basically. So the, the niche I came to uh, was actually uh, baby products, which as you know, like is a pretty big niche and there are tens of thousands of, of products in this niche and you have like a lot of options to test. So basically you came to the niche just from thinking about the world and what people would buy? Exactly, as I said, I, I just wanted something like very general so that I don't have to uh, to create the store from scratch again. And I was just like, okay, baby products sound, sounds good to me. Okay, that's uh, awesome. It's interesting uh, product signing method. Um, and uh, when you started your store, it was like one product store or you just listed multiple products for babies? So I listed actually multiple products. Like in my thinking, um, especially if you're a beginner and you don't know what works and what doesn't, dropshipping in, in a lot of ways is like, it, it's a game of numbers. So in order to find the, the right product, you need to first go through as many products as you can in as little time as possible. So you need to say to yourself that like, you want to upload five products a day. This way you have like much higher chance to, um, to get the good product because there are many things that you don't know about the product on the back end, like knowing how much competition it has and how well it's going to co convert. It's very hard to, to determine before actually testing. So testing as many products as possible is the key here. Okay. 
Um, and how many products did you test in parallel? Do you have a number? Way too much. I was like, I was all by myself, like working, like just uploading products all day. And when I started out, I had like a, a goal of uploading uh, five or six products a day. And with time, it, it becomes much harder because you upload a product and it, that's not it. You need to also advertise it. You need to, to optimize the, the page. You need to find a good supplier and connect it uh, to your system, to AutoDS, to the supplier. And it's a pretty time-consuming process, uh, which later on I've actually hired an employee that uh, that I basically I teach them how to do it, and they started doing this part of the of the business. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the product we are from uh, US or uh, China or anything else. So you know, we all prefer to to sell something from the US. But sometimes, uh, like not all the products are in the US, so your selection is pretty limited if you're just focusing on products and shipping from the US. So actually, um, at that time, most of the products I was selling were, were from China. Okay, um, uh, from, from what supplier? Which supplier did you use? Uh, I, I actually found out, like in the beginning, I started with the, with AliExpress. And I had like so many communication issues with suppliers. I had a hard time uh, handling all the support uh, that I needed because, you know, you, you ship products to customers and they have questions. You need to provide answers. And this answer you need to get from the from the AliExpress suppliers, which they are not very responsive uh, most of the time. So I've actually found CJ dropshipping to be a really good solution for a dropshipper that want to get into the business. Like they have a good selection of products. You can actually request, uh, you, you can do a source request, which basically you post like whatever AliExpress product that you want and they'll find it for you. So basically CJ is like a Chinese supplier that can source for you any product from AliExpress and how much it, it's cheaper than AliExpress or faster shipping, what's going on there? Yeah, so not really cheaper. It's uh, the price is the same uh, most of the time. It can actually be a little uh, more expensive sometimes, but like you have way more control. You can actually choose what shipping method um, you you want to use, and I really like it. I like it much better. When like if you have more sales for a product, can you bring it to their US warehouse? How it, how this works works? Exactly. So that's like the next step. Like basically, if I break it down, there are like three steps. First step, you start with dropshipping from China. Then you can actually bring the product into CJ uh, warehouses that are inside the US, um, which still um, doesn't cost too much. You don't need too much uh, money up front. And it's pretty easy to do with CJ. And then basically, if you see that it, it like it really works and you want to make manufacture your own, then you can go ahead and do that. And how long did it take you to get your shows set on your dropshipping store? Oh, so actually when I started, it wasn't like uh, going very easy for me. Um, I was going a lot of wrong directions. So it took me like, um, I think something like two weeks until I got my first step, but obviously it wasn't, wasn't very profitable. Like I was basically losing money. What was your uh, beginning budget? With what budget did you start? Yeah, so I didn't start with much budget. Um, I think I had like um, a thousand dollars, something like this, for for the test and, and everything. And you know, you can't really do much with with the thousand dollars unless you're doing drop shipping, which doesn't require much. So it was all all good. <laughs> Okay, and then this budget went to advertising, right? Yeah, yeah, just advertising. Okay, so we will talk soon a little bit more about advertising, but before we jump into this, uh, what was like, what was the scale that you got with uh, this baby's store? Yeah, so at the peak, actually, I had so many issues with uh, with my Facebook accounts uh, getting banned. And if it wasn't for that, I, I would have been much, much higher. 
but at the peak I was at like um, seven thousand dollars a day in in revenue, something like that. It, it was like that for like um, around a week, uh, and then I, my uh, Facebook uh, ad account got suspended, and I had some um, supplier issues. But uh, that was like the, the scale at the peak, uh, peak time period. Cool. How, how much time it took you to get to seven thousand dollars a day? Yeah, so uh, it, it took a couple of months, and I think it was four or five months uh, to get to this scale. But if you know what you're doing, you can do it much faster. And in the beginning, I was I didn't really know what what I was doing. I was learning uh, like as I go. And but yeah, that, that's how it is with dropshipping, uh, because you don't need that much money. You can actually scale really fast as opposed to having a private label brand where you need to to buy all the inventory up front and, and pay so much. You have like so much overhead and with dropshipping it's not like that. Awesome. Um, so uh, do you remember what was the first product that you sold? Yeah, I, I actually do. You know, I think everyone remembers their first, their first product. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually the, um, it was an elephant, a peekaboo toy. It's like a toy, like intera- interactive toy that moves its uh, its ears and plays like with a baby. And it's a really cool product. And I actually know why it worked. Uh, it was because uh, I was advertising on Google Shopping. And at the same time, like other advertising were scaling this product on Facebook. So my traffic was like a byproduct of people going into their store and then looking for a product on uh, on Google again. So it worked like really well at the time. Cool. And uh, how was the feeling with the for the first uh, sale? It was actually amazing. I remember I uh, I just took my camera and uh, I remember I took a selfie. Like <laughs> I said, this is my my first uh, selfie. <laughs> I was this excited. It's an amazing feeling to get your first uh, sale. Uh, I also remember uh, that, and I think uh, basically every dropshipper remembers his uh, yeah. first sale. Yeah, especially yeah. with Shopify, you have like this um, uh, the notification and everything, and the Shopify like green color. Like in the beginning, it really um, really rises your dopamine when you see this uh, this icon. It was really cool. Yeah, nice. Um, it's it's a bit uh, addiction after that. Like you're starting to get more and more sales and you start to get into that. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I I think you know when someone is a beginner when he has the the notification and sound turn on, and then when you start to get a little more advanced and you don't want to see the notifications anymore, like. You just turn it off and and you check it every couple of hours. Like, otherwise, you just be glued to your phone all the day. Yeah, it's a, it's an addiction. I agree. After some uh, sales, it's too much. Definitely. Okay. Um, what? Uh, so you you talked about uh, the Facebook advertising and about Google Shopping. Can you tell us a, a bit more how you advertise a new dropshipping product that you want to test? For sure, uh, I was actually um, I did a course on Google Dropshipping, and I, I also saw some like good information on AutoDS website that really helped me to like kickstart everything. And um, what I'm basically what I'm doing is pretty simple, like uploading a bunch of products to your Shopify store, connect them to whatever supplier you'd like. I really recommend uh, using the AutoDS app to connect to uh, CJ Dropshipping because. Like CJ Dropshipping, um, their interface is, is pretty hard to to navigate. Um, so I found AutoDS really handy in this way. So I was just uploading a bunch of products. Like I said, the key here is to do it quickly. Um, if you upload one product a week, your chances are much lower to, to succeed. So you just gotta go at it, upload five, six products a day. Um, open a, a sandbox campaign, I call it, on, on Google Shopping, and just put a bunch of uh, product groups in there and with one product in each group. And basically what you do is you, you just observe it over a couple of, of days. You give the product the chance uh, to spend some money. 
And in the beginning, my stop loss point was when I was spending on a product two times its uh, price. So if a product cost like $50, I was waiting until it, it, it spends $100. If it didn't make a sale, I kill it. And if it does make a sale, I check maybe there's something that, that I can improve with this product. And uh, you use for like different ads, videos, pictures, how do you do that? So basically with, with Google Shopping, you don't have much options. So you just upload a product and the main image is, is the key here. It's like the only creative part, I would say, of this, uh, of this advertising. And I, I was actually doing retargeting too uh, on Facebook, uh, but not to call audience, just retargeting the people who uh, visited the website, added something to cart. Yeah, that, that was my method. Didn't involve too much creative work. And on Facebook, you use the video ads or uh, images? So actually, I didn't have uh, much video ads because it's, you know, it's hard to find uh, the good videos unless you create them. But I did have some, uh, some good video ads. And actually, I told you about the, uh, the elephant product, which after that, I found the, uh, a similar product, which is the Peekaboo Bell. That's the one um, that you have actually uh, have screenshot of. And this one, and I started scaling it on Facebook. So this was actually a product that started on Google Shopping, didn't work too well, but then I found like a really good, um, you know, it was like home taken, home uh, video, like of a baby playing with this product, wasn't like anything fancy, just a simple product of a baby having fun with the product. And this was actually the creative that, that worked the most. Um, I did try to uh, to play with it a little, you know, add some subtitles and add some video effects. Um, but like in the end, what worked best was the original video. No editing, no nothing, just showing the baby having fun. That That's what like convinced people. Did you consider uh, to brand your uh, successful products, this uh, uh, bear or the elephant? Yeah, I've actually, I, I've taken a look into, into branding it, but like just before I was about to do that, and I had the Facebook account issues I told you about, but branding was definitely something that was like uh, on the line. What is your uh, Shopify subscription plan right now? And what was uh, before when you did the uh, dropshipping? So actually, when I started dropshipping, I was obviously at the, uh, the starter plan, like the, the lowest plan. And I worked my way up to the, to the advanced plan with, with the store we talked about, the dropshipping store, the, the baby one. And currently I'm on Shopify Plus and it gives us like um, the freedom to edit the checkout and do some A-B tests over there. So it also makes sense uh, in terms of uh, fees to upgrade. So actually a good tip for everyone is um, that there's like if you search on Google a uh, Shopify plan calculator, uh, I think the first result is going to be like a calculator that shows you uh, like you basically uh, uh, input your uh, your revenue and how you're um, uh, processing the payments or PayPal or any of that. N not Shopify plus, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Shopify payments. So uh, you enter that and then it basically gives you uh, which plan you should be at. And like it's calculating how much fees you're going to pay and what's the base price. And it tells you like what you should use. Awesome. So basically for you, it was not only fees saving, but also it increased the conversion rate on the checkout because you worked on the checkout. Exactly, that was like the, the key functionality that, that I was looking for when uh, when going for Plus. So we talked about how you find your products that basically you just feel if something works well or not and think about the niche and about the audience. We talked about the marketing that you use, Google Shopping and uh, Facebook, and about the suppliers that you use, which are basically Chinese suppliers with uh, US warehouses and then you see what works and you scale it up. But what do you do when uh, someone comes to your store? How do you increase your sales using uh, different strategies? 
So basically, there are many ways that you can increase sales and increase AOV. And I have like many tricks I can I can share with you. And first, like upsells. I mean, that's the best way to increase AOV. And AOV increases your profit margin by by so much. I mean, if you increase your your AOV, and it's basically more money without spending more on ads. So it's a key um, for making a profitable dropshipping business. Like if you're not doing upsells, you, you'll have a really hard time um, getting it to a point where it's profitable. So I was doing actually two types of upsells. One was uh, upsells before the cart. So when you add something to the cart, you're gonna have like a pop-up, pops up. And then you'll see some products that make sense like based on what you first uh, purchased, you're going to see other products that you might like. And so if you don't pick this, you just go into the normal checkout. And actually, when you when you finish the checkout, uh, you'll also get an upsell and with some urgency. Like uh, it will say something like, so you have 10 minutes to uh, to buy this product. And what I found out is pretty interesting. Contrary to what like people would believe would work with upsells, actually the, the best product for upsells is the actual product that they bought in the first place. So offering the same product twice works really well uh, a lot of the times. I mean, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. You know, some products people don't buy uh, two of them. Like if you buy a laptop, nobody's gonna buy a second laptop. But if you buy a... Um, uh, a cup, for example, then offering another cup is uh, should work. It's cool. And you give a discount for the second one? Yeah, I actually did give a discount because you can actually give discount because uh, the products will be shipped together. And with with drop shipping, as you know, a um, big part of the cost is actually shipping because you're shipping from China. So your cost is, uh, a lot of it is shipping. So if you're shipping two products in the same package, uh, the shipping cost is, is not going to be twice. Obviously, it's going to be much less. So you can pass the savings on to the customer. Yeah, it's cool. So basically, you give a discount, but you don't lose money. Exactly. And you, you don't spend on a, another uh, cost per acquisition. So you pay for one acquisition, and you get twice the uh, the revenue, basically. Not, not twice because you give a little discount, but close to that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, can you tell us what is uh, the AOV that you, you mentioned? Because I guess that many people will not understand what is that. So AOV is basically average order value, one of the key metrics um, in e-commerce. It's one of the things you should really like take a close look of. And when I when I started with this one, the product cost uh, thirty dollars basically, twenty nine ninety nine. And when I started out, my AOV was like uh, thirty two dollars. Uh, it was just like a little more from people that um, occasionally like bought another product in the store. But when I started really like hammering it down with with upsells and offers and and all of that, uh, it got up to almost like forty dollars, which is a big difference wow. like, because you you gain an extra eight dollars uh, on each customer that you have. Wow! Well, and then you can spend more into the uh, advertising. Exactly. Then you can like spend more on acquisition, and get more customers. Interesting. Yeah. So basically, what other ways do you have to increase the AOV? So there's also another trick that I was using like towards the end of the of the scaling. Now that's something uh, I didn't see much people, uh, I didn't see too many stores using this method, but it's actually uh, like making new shipping uh, methods and you can get really creative with it. So you can have a standard shipping and then you'll have express shipping, which these two are like regular, you see them in every store. But then you can do some cool stuff like add a third shipping method and like that includes a, a new random product with your order for like ten dollars more. And like I said, you're not gonna pay too much for this product because they are all shipped together. 
So you can add something that costs, let's say, three dollars for you. And I think it's also really good, um, like for the customer. I think it's cool. Yeah, and then, do you make profits also on the shipping cost? Yeah, I mean, the shipping cost is going to be much lower because you're, you're already shipping and, and a package to the customer. Uh, for the express shipping, of course, you're going to make a profit and you can have like uh, express shipping for like $5 from your supplier and you can mark it up to $10. And actually, at some point of, of this scaling, I was actually uh, charging shipping for the first, like for the standard shipping. So I was charging like something like two dollars for the shipping, and I noticed that it didn't uh, uh, decrease my conversion rate. So I just uh, continued uh, doing that. So uh, I really recommend everyone to take a look into what uh, Tom just said and really start implementing it because it really can uh, scale up your business and help with that. So how do you get more inspiration for Facebook ads? Do you spy your competitors or do you have any other methods? How do you do that? So I always spy on competitors. I think that's the best way. Um, I'm not going to like reinvent the wheel, especially not at the beginning that you, you don't really know much about e-commerce. Then I think your best bet is like uh, take a competitor that you like what he's doing, that you see some social proof on his ads. So. Uh, you can guesstimate that he's getting some sales because nobody wastes money on ads that are not making uh, not making money. I mean, not in e-commerce. So, if he's having some social proof, you can take a look at the ad that he did. Uh, you can you can try to understand why it's working and look at the creative. I mean, don't copy the exact thing, but take away the key point that, that make this one work and try it for your business. So if you see an ad that works and you see that it's like, a, a, it's shoot at home and it's like a, a, like user generated content, not too professional, then you can try to make something like that in your home and, and use this creative. And you can also take some key notes from, uh, from the creative that they wrote uh, from the text and see like uh, what points uh, the customer uh, cares about and, and make your ads based on that. Okay, cool. So basically if something works for someone else, it means that they basically spend money on it and it means that it works for them. Exactly. Uh, and it makes your process much, much simpler because you don't need to guess anything. You have something that works and you just need to find a way to make it work for you. How do you manage everything? Do you have a team of uh, VAs or do you manage everything uh, by yourself? So at the time that I started dropshipping, I was actually all by myself. Uh, I did everything by myself and I, I think it's important for, uh, for everyone to do everything alone for a certain period of time and to, to learn everything better and like if you if you hire someone, you need to actually teach them. You can't expect them to, to learn everything alone. So you gotta know how to do it best. And so at the time I, I was all by myself. And right now for my for my new company, the one that came after uh, the baby uh, stop, uh, I'm actually I have a team, and it's me, my partner, and another uh, eight employees. And we will manage uh, it all with like a project, project management uh, software. And we are doing like everything, like really streamlined and everything has a process. Awesome. And what, what do what this team does? Like what kind of tasks? Um, they are doing a lot of product research and customer service. And they are also managing a, a call center, which uh, they call Abandon Card Desk, by the way. Another really uh, important tip for, for all of you um, that have a lot of Abandon Cards, that's basically money on the floor. Like, I mean, yes, emails are going to get some of them back to your stores. SMS will also do it. But actually calling the customers is the, is the best way to get them back. It's like very personal and a lot of American uh, 
people really like that. Okay, so there is a like salesman who just calling people. So I wouldn't really call it a salesman, and that was just like a, a VA, and was not like super professional salesman. And mm-hmm. but you know when someone abandons your car, that's basically it's like a really hot lead. So you don't need too much um, to get them back to buy your product. Basically, a lot of them are just having a hard time um, like technically with the checkout. So uh, you don't really need to sell it to them. You just gotta um, like give them the last push, I would say. And how, how do they call them technically? There is a software or what? Yeah, we're using a software called the um, air call. To manage our call center really good software I mean no complaints and, and yeah if you get a little bit more advanced and, and you want to attribute and um, sales to certain ads then you can actually use call rail and your uh, employees are from uh, the US or from any other country my employees are all from the Philippines but they are like they're highly vetted employees and uh, I hire maybe one out of every 20 or 30 applications and I make sure that their English is good and they, they have like that they don't have too much of a Philippine accent and so basically I hire the best of the best but you have a ton of good uh, employees in the Philippines I mean uh, yeah I, I agree because this way you save time and uh, there are really high quality people what about payments how, how do you get uh, um, payments from customers? Do you use PayPal or oh. any other payment method? So as you know, like with e-commerce, uh, payment is like the... It's a hard point for Israelis like us. And it's really not that easy. Uh, when you start scaling up, uh, using PayPal is not very optimal. They can just shut you down at any given point. So you don't want to just rely on them and there, there are no other um, uh, payment gateways here in Israel that actually has a native integration to Shopify, meaning the checkout shows inside the, the Shopify store without redirecting you to, to another uh, page. So at the time with my dropshipping store, I was actually using uh, another sub, uh, payment gateway here in Israel that redirects you to an outside uh, page and then brings you back. And it, it does hurt the conversion rates a little bit, but the biggest problem with that is uh, is the time it takes for them to pay you the money. It takes like 30 days. So if you're tight on cash flow, you're gonna have a hard time using one of these gateways. You're gonna have to stick with PayPal. Okay, so for beginners, you would start just with PayPal? Yeah, it works, it works. I mean, I have friends that have scaled uh, past half a million dollars a month just of PayPal. And it is possible, it's not optimal, but it's possible. Um, yeah, I, I agree, because PayPal is the easiest way to start. We are talking here about international uh, users, because for American it's much easier, you can go for Stripe or anything else. About uh, the product that you sold in the beginning, uh, did you get any sample to your home or you just started to sell it without actually seeing the product? Yeah, so uh, it's a little bit of a shame, but I, the first time I saw my product was like after 10,000 sales. So I didn't, I didn't really know what I was selling until like a later, later point in this business. But like, I mean, eventually I did get a sample. It, it takes like, it took very long. And I remember the day I took it, it was like all submerged in water. I, I don't know what happened in the way, but the product was like all really wet. Uh, but I did get a sample eventually, but you really don't have to. Uh, as I said in the beginning, um, one of the key points here is to test as many products as possible. And getting samples to your home for each product is, is actually against this. It, 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 like you wouldn't be able to test that fast. So I'd say get a sample once something starts working for you, then it's a good time to, um, to get a sample. But up to this point, you're good to go. So basically you get the feedback from your customers. Actually, a little bit before that, I always check the feedbacks on, on AliExpress or 
whatever other, other platforms this product uh, is at. So I just Google the product. I check what people have to, have to say about it. And I mean, if it's really bad, I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't even sell it. And, but, but if it looks okay, then you can put it up to your store and get some feedback. Actually, um, a review up for a story is really important, both for social proof and also for like getting feedback. And so even like, if you have an angry customer, and uh, you better let him uh, leave a review on your store uh, on your store review system than to go on Facebook and say some bad things about you. So that, that's also a good one. So you allow them to put reviews on your store for the products? Yes, I do, but um, it's not auto-published. So I can actually um, choose which reviews I want to publish and which ones I prefer not to. And that's one of the of the advantages that you have when when it's your own store you're you're, you're, you're the boss you you pick what's going to show and what doesn't and then you just you, you also work with the customer after that to make them happy of course i mean if if someone leaves a bad review and like yeah i'm not gonna publish it i have no reason to but i will speak to the customer and try to make it right for him because as you know, uh, in the United States, they also have the option to, to charge back the charge. So you, you don't want to uh, mess with them too much because like as we said before, we are also using just PayPal as a gateway. So if you have too many charge back and disputes, you're going to, uh, to get burned by PayPal. And also like lately, Facebook, um, it's not really lately, but Facebook has a feedback score on your page. And uh, they basically send um, surveys to customers who have purchased from you. And uh, it's like, uh, they're anonymic. They won't show uh, you the actual customer that uh, gave you a certain feedback, but it's a score from, uh, from zero to five. And if you go below a certain point, you're gonna have a, like a really hard time advertising on Facebook, your CPMs will go up. And at one point, your, your account will just uh, shut down. So you gotta make sure your customers are happy. Wow. Okay, yeah, so so you say, what you say here is that basically Shopify dropshipping business is like every business in the world and you need really to care about the customers and make them happy. Exactly, it's, it's actually becoming uh, more and more important with time. And basically everyone, is, uh, is making new systems of, of checking like how good is the experience of the customers are because Facebook, it, it's their own interest that customers that purchase from ads are actually happy with their products because otherwise people just wouldn't click on ads. So it's Facebook interest, it's Shopify interest, it's PayPal, of course it's PayPal interest. PayPal don't like when, when a customer disputes uh, the charge. So basically, it's everyone's interest um, for you to sell a good quality product and give good quality uh, customer service. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have uh, two last questions. Um, so one of them is, uh, what are the tools that you use to manage your dropshipping business and to scale it up? So I've used a few uh, different tools. Um, I was using, like I said, um, I was using your software, the AutoDS software, and really helped me with the streamlining, the, the product uploading, and checking the prices and everything. And this was like, I'd say that the main, um, the main app that I was using. And I was also using some upsell uh, apps. I really, I really like the uh, Candy Rack um, upsell which is the um, before cart upsell, the pop-up. And I was using reconvert for post-purchase upsells. They work really good there also. So it's really, um, what else did I use? Uh, there's actually one more trick that I can give to you guys, uh, which is to add a line um, somewhere in the top part of the page that says, um, your item will arrive in this date. So if you have a fast shipping, like if you ship from China, I guess 
you don't really want to do that, but if you have uh, faster shipping, then you can uh, like um, get an estimated shipping uh, delivery date and show it to the customers. So it really puts up a uh, conversion rate. Cool. So uh, for all those who use your suppliers, uh, it's really recommended. Exactly. Like I've tested it. I've actually tested it in, uh, um, like I did a, an A/B test uh, without this line and with this line, and it was showing like great results just by like this one little trick. Awesome. Um, okay. So the last question that I like to ask in the uh, end of an interview is uh, what would be your uh, best tip for a beginner who wants to start a dropshipping business? So the best tip, um, I'm actually going to say a tip that's not like really technical or, uh, or like very related to uh, dropshipping, but in general, um, like pick what you want to do and just stick to it because it's not going to be easy or not going to make money uh, the first day and not even the first week. Uh, for me, it actually almost took like six months from the point like I really started in the beginning until I started making money. So um, the key here is, is to just stick to it, stay dedicated and keep pushing even when things are not working and, and, and just be patient until you, you start making money because it's a process. Awesome. So like any business, you just need to be consistent. Exactly. And being consistent is not always easy. It's easy to be consistent when you're succeeding and making money, but it's not that easy to be consistent when uh, when things are not working for you. And, and that's where uh, you really need to stick with it. Great. So uh, thank you so much for uh, this super inspiration uh, interview and for all the inspire that you will give to uh, dropshippers. And thank you for your time, Tom. And thank you. For sure. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for your time as well.